everyone, welcome to The Buzz. I'm Paige Lawrenson. On today's show, we have Drax Project in our studio. Then we're on the red carpet of the Curse of La Llorona. We have some amazing buzz news, and then talk to Kat Dealey of So You Think You Can Dance to talk about what we can expect on the new season. As you can see, we have a very full show, so let's get this party started. What's up, people? Let's get buzzing. So if you're a fan of horror movies, then last week's surprise number one box office movie, The Curse of La Llorona, is for you. Cindy was on the carpet to get the lowdown on the myth and the movie. Let's check it out. Can I ask you a question, Father? Do you know anything about La Llorona? The Weeping Woman. It's a folk tale. To some. Oh my God, it was so fun. It was so fun. I always knew who she was and I always wanted to be in a scary movie. I love horror films. I love anything that has to deal with the supernatural or uh, metaphysics. And I always wanted to be the scary element in a movie. And when this came up, it was just great. I just couldn't wait to do it. How did you channel to get into character? Like, how did you prepare? Um, uh, well, I think uh, just my own anger. <laughs> Can I say that? Yeah. I guess my own anger and, um, I, you know, I see her as a codependent woman who uh, needs to be validated by a man and when he takes his attention from her, she loses her mind to the point where she, this like takes a precedent over even her own children and she commits the most heinous crime. When she realizes what she's done, she, it's like her mind unhinges and she kills herself and then this spirit is kind of in limbo she's full of anger full of sorrow and just trying to remedy the situation but she can't and the kids we just had a great time we worked really hard because it's very athletic to be in a in a horror movie everybody's like screaming or crying or running and so by the end of the day we're all exhausted but we had so much fun together anything scary happen on set a lot of stuff a lot of stuff ray had this crazy experience where his bracelet burst off his hand there was a day where it was it was really, really hot and a cold chill just came through the house. There was another day where there was nobody supposed to be upstairs and we heard footsteps. It was just one of those kinds of the things. The director was talking about that. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. And I didn't believe in it at first, but now, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. You know, it is, um, I love ghost stories. I love scary movies. And, um, you know, I... You know, I, I was brought in by New Line, and you know, James uh, James saw my short, and it was a scary movie. It was basically a little scary short film, and um, you know, there's something about that that you know, I, I love the experience of seeing scary movies in theaters, and um, I think that they really connected to that. And I think that you know, I love the script. You know, I heard about her as a teenager. I grew up in Los Angeles, and my friends would tell you know, it was you try and scare everybody with like you know, ghost stories, and you know, freak everybody out. And you know, I've heard so many of them, but. Um, I think that La Llorona sticks with people because it's so specific and so dark, you know, about a mother who, you know, kids kills her children. And, you know, that really, you know, it's like you think about, I mean, of all the ghost stories that you hear, I mean, there is something so specific and, you know, but you can also really relate to it. You know, we've all been kids. We all have moms and hopefully not crazy moms like that. But, uh, but yeah. And how was it working with the cast and the crew? They were amazing. We had an incredible cast and incredible crew. Um, you know, and it was a, we had a tight schedule. We all got super sick. We got the flu, and it was like we were brutalized during it. But you know, everyone had the best attitude, and you know, we were really put through the ringer at times. But you know, everyone just came together, and I think it was you know because it's a really great team. It was a great team of people. So, have you heard of La Llorona before this? No, I hadn't heard of it before. Uh, when I read the script, I thought that it was just a made-up idea for for the movie and I thought it was a great rich story and a great rich idea but I didn't know that it was based on a real myth. So how did you feel when you heard that it was an actual real myth? I was very excited because what I, what I love about it is that it, that it brings culture from outside of the United States to the United States in a way that is uh, relatable to everybody here and so anything that you know spreads diversity of culture here I'm all for that. Okay, so tell us a little bit about the character that you played. I play Detective Cooper, and I'm a friend of the, uh, the main family in the film. Uh, before the film starts, their father dies, so uh, you know, they're a grieving family. And so uh, I'm the one that kind of comes around and makes sure they're okay, check, check in on the widow, check in on the kids, and make sure they're all right.
Hi, my name is Sean Patrick Thomas, and you've just been buzzed. After the break, we have Drax Project in our studio to talk new music and their smash hit, Woke Up Like This. We'll be back after this. On May 28th, America's got new judges. You are a star! And the talent that was amazing. will make history. OMG. AGT premieres May 28th on NBC. Every artist is looking for one thing, that next great song. From an executive producer of The Voice and executive producers Adam Levine and Dave Stewart comes a show about creating the next great song. The show is giving songwriters a real opportunity to pitch their songs. We're going to pull back the curtains and we're going to show you how music is made. They don't got a pill for this. We're looking for great songs. This feels like a hit. You were born to do this. I just want to perform this song in front of like 40,000 people. This has been incredible. I'm picking your song. <laughs> Songland premieres May 28th on NBC. I remember being at university uh, with Sean and Matt and then walking down Courtney Place and, you know, going to see them um, play like and busk and... Yeah, I remember you guys just like saying, "Oh, it's just we're just literally doing this for cash to pay rent," and and, and it actually did spiral completely out of control. It's yeah. funny. And then after we started busking, Sam joined. We got a car battery, bass amp, went down, played some bass, drum, saxophone on the street, got some bar gigs, like you know some school, some university, college gigs, and then a couple of months after that, this guy joined on the guitar, and that's when we started writing music, and that was around about 2015. Yo, we're Drax Project, and you're watching the Buzz Artist Spotlight. Woke up late, somewhere far away from home, pockets empty, wallet gone, sun is streaming all I'm down in my face, laying down on someone's bed, a girl that I had hardly met, my head is spinning like I've been now days. Now you're waking up too, lying next to me in your room Now I'm quite used to someone so new Did you catch my name? Yeah, I wonder how long I've slept in I don't know where the hell I've been I know that's alright Last night we met at one Drink to two, dance to four Walked you home, away till dawn Slept till noon So Woke Up Late was created with just us four and, um, and our producer in New Zealand, his name is Devin, Devin Abrams. We made that together in his house and his room and I don't know, it was probably the most natural and organic song for us to have ever written together. Came, came together without really trying too hard, which I think I think gave the song the energy that it needed. It's, it's kind of just an easygoing song. It just came together like it. I, I can't really explain more than that. What do you guys? Well, we were trying to write an album at the time and woke up late. Like Sean, Sean came up with the um, like the verse and the first verse and the chorus and the space for like half an hour just messing around. And then it sounds weird to say, but we actually forgot about the song. We were just focusing on other music that we were writing and then we were in the studio one day and Sean played it for some friends of ours who had come through and they were like, that, that's sick, you should record it. And then we recorded it, put the bass to it, drums in, and then the song just, it just it finished, we finished it really quickly and it was, it was a really... Oh, okay. I, just, I just had something to add, but I'll, I'll wait till Ben finishes. <clears throat> and yeah. Oh no. <laughs> I was going to say. I was gonna say, the song actually came out. We were writing the song while we we're all still working and had day jobs and all that stuff. So it was quite funny. Woke up late. So, so <laughs> it, was, it was like musical cheers. Um, so woke up late came out while we were still working. We used to hear the song while we were working. Yeah. Like for example, Ben and I were painting houses, and woke up late would be on the radio while we were working. It's, that is crazy. It actually was crazy hearing your own 
music on the radio. So from that was like, when was that? 20, the start of 20, 2017. Oh. The end of 2017, Woke Up Late was playing. Yeah. yeah. So start of 2018, we um, decided to do it, do it seriously. So now, yeah, we're here in the States and it's crazy. Looking over, we could never be unspoken. I can't even breathe when I'm with you. I don't want to see. After we released Rock Up, Woke Up Late originally, we did talk about briefly the idea of it being a duet. The song has, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a story from start to finish, you know, verse, chorus, verse. There's like a storyline. It's about, it's about two people. Totally. And, um, but we didn't, we didn't do it as a duet originally, obviously. When we got approached by... Oh, when we got the Camila Cabello tour, we were opening for her around Europe. Um, there were some mutual friends made with Hayley. Someone in Camila's team showed Hayley and she really liked the song. Our manager came into a room in New Zealand in our studio and said, do you want Hayley Steinfeld on the on your song? And, and obviously... No, she, there she is. Would you like to say anything? <laughs> She's stoked to be here. <laughs> and, um, and so, of course, we said yes. And because we're massive fans of her music. I mean, yeah. So, it, it was, of course, yeah, this, of course we do it. So. You are my son. You are my birth. You didn't know all the ways I loved you. I mean, we love performing live, that's our jam. <laughs> like, that's fully, like, we were a band playing music before we were writing music, you know, so playing live. Done a lot of shows over the years, done heaps of shows. We'd probably do like a hundred shows a year before Woke Up Late came out. Or more than that, honestly. Yeah. We were playing so many shows. Yeah, that's what we so yeah, we'll never not love playing live, but um, recently, like, since Woke Up Late and we've been refining, like, our writing process, um, being in the studio is definitely like a whole different type of yeah. fun, especially when we're working with like such talented producers and songwriters. It's it's just a totally it's really different exciting, ball game. Eh? Leaving leaving the studio after writing something, you just can't wait to get home and listen to the the bounce you call it, the yeah. MP3 of it. Yeah, and, and it, um, it's always like you spend the whole day writing it, and then like right in the last. I don't know, just at the end of the day, like, Sean will track vocals and then you'll be listening to it. It's like, oh, it's actually sick, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it sounds good. <laughs> and, then, and then, like, the satisfaction of going back and, and, and listening to it um, and figuring out what you like and what you don't like and then refining the song and, you know, finishing it off, sanding all, off all the rough edges and, and giving it a nice paint of glossy. And then going and playing it live. Yeah. And then playing it live after that. We actually, I mean... Speaking on behalf of all of us here, we've gotten so much better as a group, as individuals, at writing music, and the stuff we're making now is so much better than what we've made before. And I mean, that's just from our perspective. Obviously, new music always gonna, is going to feel cooler and fresher, but we've been sitting on some of the songs we've been writing for, you know, six, six to 12 months, even longer, some of them. And um, I feel like the songs we're going to release on the album and anything that comes out as a single we're we're personally just like so happy yeah we're 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 um i mean i hope that it tops what we've done before we all feel i think that it is we'll just have to wait and see though i guess we've got heaps of songs that are done or like 80 percent done you know nearly just need the um like finishing touches and stuff but at the moment we're just in the process of selecting what will actually be on the album and what we're going to save for later on Yay! We're Drax Project and you've just been buzzed. We got buzzed. We'll be back after the break with some breaking buzz news and then we head over to So You Think You Can Dance to talk about the new season with host Kat Dealey.
Adele and her husband Simon Konecki just announced they separated after more than seven years together. The pop singer's reps announced the split Friday night in a statement to the Associated Press saying, Adele and her partner have separated. They are committed to raising their son together lovingly. As always, they ask for privacy. There will be no further comment. The last time Adele and Simon were together in public was back in January when they were photographed arriving backstage at an Elton John concert at the Staples Center in downtown Los Angeles. Adele and Simon have mostly kept their relationship low key since they started dating back in the summer of 2011. She gave birth to their only son Angelo in October 2012. Adele and Simon eventually got married in a super secret wedding ceremony, but she didn't confirm their union until 2017. Hopefully this is not the end for them. The story is still developing, so for more information please go to www.thenewmusicbuzz.com. I'm Marissa Cleal and you've just been buzzed. So You Think You Can Dance is now in its 16th season and we caught up with host Kat Dealey to talk about some of the show's noticeable changes and new judges. Let's take a look. My whole thing is I really enjoy people. I like people who are exceptionally talented. I like people who are passionate. I like people who um, work hard, who try hard, who have a dream, who have a story. And so when I speak to people, I mean, this is the first stage and it's so, I, lo I love it. I don't know whether it's just because I'm nosy uh, or I like a gossip. That's probably why I've lost my voice, essentially. Is, um, but I like people and I, and, and I really enjoy it and, and um, it's interesting to see, you know, so, so often we make judgments on people, particularly now on social media and, and everything else and there's so many judgments made on everybody and, and comments and it's actually like we should all just be a bit kinder to each other because the minute you start talking to somebody you find out their story and you find out, you know, things that have that, you know, trials and tribulations of their lives and things that they've overcome and, and um, I don't know, and then to see them perform as they do, I, I couldn't be prouder. And then for them to move on from the competition and go and do, like, people like Twitch and who's, who's doing amazingly well and movies and Travis who's winning, winning Emmys, like, I feel so proud. Um, so, yeah. That's really cool. Yeah, thanks. And season 16, do you still get just as excited? Yeah, I really do. I, and we've got a new, brand new set too. We've got a brand new judging panel. So it feels very fresh actually this season. Um, so yeah, I always do get excited. You never know quite what you're going to get. You never know quite what someone's going to do. You can think that you do, but you never ever do. And we, lo we love, listen, we love the crazy. We love the good. We love the great. The bad even, you know, we, we, we like it all. There are two new judges. We have uh, Laurie Ann Gibson, who's very, very, she's very strict. She's asking an awful lot from these guys. She's, she's strict with the dancers. She's strict with the judges. She's not strict with me though at all. She's a, pu <laughs> she's a pussycat with me. But um, yeah, so it's interesting to add that dynamic to, to it. But she's always constructive with her criticism. You know, you, somebody who's had that kind of career, you have to listen to what they have to say. You know, it's only ever going to be better for you. And also the thing is, is you know what it's like. If you go on an audition, you learn more from the ones that you don't get than the ones that you do actually it's much tougher but you learn a lot from those uh, and then we also have Dominic Dietrich so he's on the show too which is lovely because he brings an element of I've been there I've done that I know exactly how you're feeling and what's going through your brain right now but he's also naughty and funny and a reprobate and I love having him there and him being all twinkly and sparkly yeah so yeah. thanks Kat thank, thank you, you. Yeah. Thanks. thank you so much thank you very much That's all we have. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to Fox, So You Think You Can Dance, Drax Project, Cindy Kennedy Gomez, and the cast of The Curse of La Llorona. Don't forget to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and double tap us on Instagram. All at buzz underscore access. I'm Paige Lawrenson, and I'll see you all next week. Bye, guys! Last night we met at one, drink two, two, dance two, four, walk two, home. Nothing
For more music entertainment news, go to www.thenewmusicbuzz.com.